Welcome to Black River Connections, your opportunity to get familiar with the Black River here in southern Windsor County, Vermont, and to learn about some of the issues surrounding the river. We'll also explore some of the great opportunities for you to get involved in enjoying, improving, and protecting this incredible resource. I'm Kelly Stetner, founder and director of the Black River Action Team, an all-volunteer grassroots group doing projects around the 202 square mile watershed since 2000. From the headwaters in Plymouth and the North Branch in Reading to Springfield, where the Black meets the Connecticut River, BRAT is interested in every community in the watershed. From water quality to property values, from recreation to public safety, we're here to make Black River connections with you. Welcome to our River Macroinvertebrate Hunt. The Black River Action Team is an all-volunteer grassroots organization covering the Black River drainage basin, the watershed, here in southeastern Vermont. One of the many programs we conduct is water quality monitoring. Trained volunteers, we like to call river dippers, collect water samples that we send off to a lab to test for components such as chloride and nitrogen. These data are very useful to gauge water quality. However, a more complete picture of water health can be gained by interviewing the residents who live at the bottom of a stream or river. Because they are always there, they can tell us a lot more. Who are these river residents? While you may not recognize them in their larval stage, many of them are familiar to most of us in their adult form. Dragonflies, mayflies, caddisflies, blackflies, craneflies, dobsonflies, and even mosquitoes all start out as aquatic larvae. Others, including clams, snails, water mites, and crayfish, live on the river bottom for their entire lives. We call all these creatures benthic macroinvertebrates. These two words describe the facts that they live on the river bottom and are animals without backbones that can be seen without a microscope. We know that different families of river macroinvertebrates have different tolerance levels to pollution, so aquatic biologists and citizen scientists collect, sort, and count them to learn about the health of a water body. Black fly larvae, for instance, are considered generally pretty tolerant of most pollutants, while most stonefly larvae are considered intolerant and are therefore a good indicator of a healthy stream or river. Mayflies are of the order Ephemeroptera, which comes from the Greek ephemera, meaning short-lived, and terra, meaning wing. This refers to the extremely short adult portion, or winged portion, of the insect's life cycle. Most species only live as adults for a matter of days or even hours, long enough to molt a second time, the only insect with two adult stages, mate and lay eggs. Then they die en masse, leaving enough eggs in the water to ensure the second generation. Most genera of mayflies have three tails as larvae and have a sort of skirt of gills along the abdomen. I remember that the word may has three letters and most mayfly larvae have three tails. Similar looking to mayflies are the stonefly larvae, also usually long-bodied and with tails sticking off the end of the abdomen. However, stoneflies always have only two tails and have their gills up along the thorax, kind of like hairy armpits. Their family name is Plecoptera, which means folded wing. 
Taking a look at the adult stonefly with wings folded neatly over its back, you can see where the name came from. The third insect of our most sensitive trio is the caddisfly of the family Trichoptera. As adults, caddisflies can be easily confused with moths because of their fuzzy winged appearance. Trike meaning hair in Greek, and ptera, of course, meaning wing. Caddisflies are one of my favorite river macroinvertebrates because so many of the different species create fascinating tiny homes using their own silk to sew together bits of their habitat. Sand grains, pebbles, twigs, leaves, and aquatic plants. There are even caddis species which use their silk to build nets for capturing food as it drifts downstream or for anchoring themselves to the bottom of the stream. What we're looking for in our samples is a large number of creatures. We aim for a hundred or so in a sample, as well as a diverse population. Lots of different kinds of creatures, but also specific intolerant families, genera, and species. That's usually stoneflies, most mayflies, and many caddisflies. Due to the ice coverage at these streams in late February, it was difficult to access the full range of habitat types across a large section of each stream, so our total numbers of creatures is a little under the 100 creature target. I had several helpers in the macroinvertebrate hunt you're about to see. Antioch University grad Megan Rafferty of Keene came up to help dig in the icy waters of the Black River and Chester Brook in late February and early March. My daughter Moira, home on spring break from Norwich University, lent her hill scrambling skills and netting experience to help Megan collect a sample from Mile Brook, which runs along Valley Street in Springfield. Mindy and Travis Watkins guided me to a safe access point for Nile Brook in Wethersfield, and my son Armando, veteran macroinvertebrate hunter, used his eagle eyes to help sort and count the four samples. Our first site is Chester Brook near the mouth where it empties into the Black River in Springfield, Vermont. Here we found mostly mayflies, a couple dozen stoneflies, several caddisflies, and members of the diptera family. This last macroinvertebrate is part of the true flies and includes blackflies and craneflies, which you might recognize better in their adult form, commonly called mosquito hawks. The site on Mile Brook is a wooded little stream that meanders down Valley Street in Springfield. Our sample was collected below the dam that used to hold the town's public swimming pool, which is now just a slightly ponded area of the stream. Here, Megan and Moira found more mayflies and caddisflies than any other macroinvertebrates, but also teased out a couple of stoneflies, dipterans, and a predaceous diving beetle larva. This sample from Nile Brook is interesting to me. The brook is clear, the sandy bottom had a rusty orange hue to it, and the site I sampled was just below a pretty deep pool at the end of a culvert under a small road. I expected to find a wide range of creatures, but there were only four mayflies, 15 caddisflies, and no stoneflies in my sample. What I did find was a huge proportion of blackfly larvae. While blackfly larvae thrive only where there's a high level of dissolved oxygen, they are considered pretty tolerant of pollution. I'll be keeping my eye on Nile Brook, and will stop back to visit this site throughout the summer. My favorite site of this sampling group was the Black River in Ludlow, just below the mouth of a brook by the fire station. Megan and I found a nice diversity of creatures, from caddis to stonefly, mayfly to dipteran. A good density of population, plus solid numbers of the more sensitive critters. Bonus! Dragonfly larvae. Ideally, we'll return to these brooks at least one more time this summer, so we can get a larger number of organisms to sort and count. Then we'll try to do a macroinvertebrate hunting event that is open to the public so everyone gets a chance to check out the wild, wet, wonderful world of life beneath the surface. 
We hope you've enjoyed our virtual macroinvertebrate hunt and will stay tuned to join the Black River Action Team for future adventures on, in, and under the water. Special thanks for sponsorship to the Mascoma Bank Charitable Donations Committee, encouragement and guidance from Michelle Tremblay of Nature Source Communications, and the Upper Merrimack Monitoring Program 